I started because I, I had. All right. <clears throat> hey, it's Matt from Black Coal Woodworking. Welcome here. Today, I'm gonna fix a problem I've got with tool storage. Check it out. My big issue is that while I love using the lathe, even though I'm not very good at it, I have nowhere to put my chisels. And so I put them on my table saw and then they fall off because there are no sides. Or I'll sometimes put them on here. And then when something rattles, off it goes. Very frustrating, but fixable. I wanna use that space down there so I can put my tools in there. So I'm gonna build myself a little apparatus. I started out by measuring the space that I had. So that was about 14 to 15 inches. After that, I ran some two by fours through the planer just to square up some edges. And then I wanted to uh, rip down some thinner pieces because this thing doesn't need to be so thick. So these are about a uh, half inch. Now that I have my narrow strips ripped at the bandsaw, I took them over to the jointer so that I could clean up the one side. After that side was cleaned up and nice and flat, I brought it over to the planer so that I could make the other side of it parallel. Then it was time to cross cut these pieces to their final dimensions at the table saw with my sled. Here's where I ran into trouble. My clamp wasn't working. So I had to try and make sure that it was really, really tight before I'd run this thing through the saw. I did not want that slipping on me. So here's what I do to get a really good half lap. Um, I'm basically making sure that the width of this piece, like I want to put the pieces like this, but I want to have a half lap joint in here so I'm really going to end up cutting away this but to get a really good cut to know how far down I or how far in I go with the stop I just set up a stop lock that is exactly where my blade ends like that and then I clamp that down and now this thing's only going to go that far, and so, oops, I want to go this way though, this way. So the blade will only come up and hit where I want it to. In this case, it's going to be the edge of the saw blade there. So, I want to cut on that side, so I'm going to have to sand that thing down. Anyway, and now we just cut ourselves a little half lap. Man, you can hardly see that joint. It goes away so nice and it's flush, like perfectly flush. So that's what I wanted. All right, so I was having trouble with my clamp on the table saw sled. It was slipping off. Every time I turned the saw on, this whole thing would just sort of pop off and lose its grip. And I realized, if you look really close, well, I've cleaned it out now, but there's these little grooves along the clamp. And those were full of sawdust. So what I did, is I literally took a wire brush and just scraped it out like this. And after I scraped it all out, this thing has like a ton of clamping pressure now. Like I couldn't do this before where I'd have, to, I could just literally hold it and pull, it would come apart. But now it's grippy again. So that's a real quick fix. Makes my clamp 10 times better. Love it. As you can tell, using the stop lock this way 
the uh, the cuts ended up going really well. They line up perfectly. And even when I stick in my piece of wood now, because I did the same thing for the bottom tray of this little storage unit, and you can kind of see from this angle, not so well, but it works pretty good. It fits nicely. I'm pumped about it. One of my helpers showed up and drew me a line so that I could cut it to length. This piece is going to be for the top part of the, I guess, tray. But the tray itself is going to actually be a bunch of strips of wood put together. And you'll see how that goes here as I cut these out at the bandsaw. To cut these short pieces out at the bandsaw, I used a stop block away from the blade. That way they don't jam up against the, the blade and the fence when I cut them. And puzzling this thing together, you'll see that I want to have two rolls of tools with a piece in the middle separating them. And that way I can uh, just plunk these things in and out whenever I need. And I'm now marking out the slots that I want to cut more half laps so that I can join, first of all, the, the long stretchers in. And then I'm going to mark out the, the short ones that will go so that I can make these tiny, I guess, square holes for the tools to sit inside. Using my redneck marking knife, I mark the lines that I want to cut, and I use the piece of wood that's going to go into that spot to mark the other side. This way I get nice clean lines to cut with. What I did was I put a stop block on the other side of the marks that I want to cut. Might not be easy to see that. But anywhere I slide this thing now between this mark and that mark, it's going to get me what I want to cut. Pretty simple, but it works. So I found myself in more trouble when I found that the chisels didn't actually fit into the holes that I had made for them. What I needed to do was notch them out by like one to two millimeters more on each side just so I'd still get that snug fit without being too tight. So on the left here you can see that there's kind of a little, almost looks like a pattern of some kind, the way those things go together. I actually ended up really liking how it looked. We'll call that a happy accident. Here I'm gluing up the sides, that way that this whole thing will stick together is basically with glue and then I'll put in the top pieces to support them as well. One of my favorite tricks when doing a glue up is to use crazy glue as a clamp, especially when you can't get a clamp into the spot you need to very easily. In this case, I put three dots of crazy glue, two on the ends and one in the middle, and then I'm using regular wood glue to support it throughout that. So the crazy glue will act as a quick clamp, and then the wood glue will be its strength when it's actually dried and cured. And now I'm just putting that piece right between the sides that I put on, so it does fit nicely in there. And then these will go on the ends of the, the whole tray at the bottom. Once I put the pieces in place, I just need to hold them down for about 30 seconds or so. Sure beats holding them for like 20 minutes. Here I'm doing kind of the same thing. I'm just lining up all my pieces and then using a combination of crazy glue and wood glue to get them in. For the most part, I'm just using crazy glue on the, the middle stretchers, but to put the whole piece into place, I want to use wood glue because I, I can clamp that easily. Once the glue had dried, it was time for sanding and wooden crack spackle. Let's face it, my joints on this stuff were not perfect, and uh, this is really just a piece of shop furniture, but in the end, I think it turned out alright.
I really actually liked the design. It sort of looked like Roman pillars of some kind or something. I took a moment to break the edges of the wood with a screwdriver to avoid slivers. Oh, the finished product. I'm so happy. If I want a chisel, I just get one. Put it back. Done. No more falling around. And I have space in the back there for more whatever. I might want to put this guy in there because I need that all the time. We'll see. Thanks for watching. If I've earned it, please consider subscribing, giving this video a thumbs up, and let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. I'm still new in this woodworking journey and appreciate your feedback. Thanks so much everyone, and we'll see you next time.